today we will be building another aircraft to finally try and test on the test island and also we will be launching the Duna probe the one that we have built in the previous episode if you missed that one link will be provided in the description below but let's get it right into the plane building yes I'm gonna use the mark 2 supersonic cockpit and all the components that I have unlocked in the previous episode while at the same time I will be packing it jam-packed with all of the experiments that I could think of because we will be landing and we will be landing on a different biome which is the island airfield. If you remember a couple of episodes ago I've built a small, small plane and when I tried to land well we had a skip hop and needed to go back and abort it for later due to the unreliable landing gear that it was using. However, we have better landing gear now. I mean, Kerbal engineers have worked diligently on the bounciness of all the wheels, as the older KSP players know. And I have decided to actually put a lot of experiments, well, as many as I can muster within the scope of this regular cargo bay. I mean, I could ultimately pack it with a few more, but I figured it might be beneficial that I, you know, keep a decent size and I don't want to have any clipping. Right, so I figured I might as well add an SAS module which would basically allow the stability assist and then I'm gonna be attaching the fuselage and all the jazz. The plane is not gonna be that, you know, complex, but it's gonna have a trick or two up its sleeve, obviously, because we need to have it. Now, uh, here was me fiddling with attachment nodes and actually it didn't work out the way I wanted to. So pro tip, you can always remove the SS module, attach and then reattach and then it works, right. So let's put in the twin engines and I was actually almost tempted to go with these fans but they would look like salad. So then I thought, okay, Panthers, Panthers might be a good, you know, turbo fan engines. Then I got with a regular Weasley. So uh, don't judge me. I mean, it's a for one of the first planes, one that will hopefully fly and land on its own power yes I know it's ambitious but and we don't yet have the procedural wings they are supposed to be unlocked soon though and we, so that means we have to go with a traditional you know Lego style puzzle pieces but it doesn't matter I always like to include two of the tail fins because and I was actually looking for some you know canards to have this like a massive delta wing but yeah on a second note, we also don't have the air brakes and uh, that means I'm actually going to be setting up two of the surfaces as ailerons while the other two are going to be set up as flaps only. Flaps only to provide extra drag and stability while landing. It's really important that you have those guys while at the same time you want to have zero control over them when it comes, but you want to have a decent amount of deflection once they're deployed. So it's another way to provide drag and stability at the same time when landing your plane, depending on the speed, of course. Now, we have two Weasleys. We do need intakes. I think, oh, these two, can I cram the two? Ah, I can cram one. Okay, well, we're gonna place one. I think one should be enough, right? Well, time will tell. We're gonna do some experiments and then we're gonna see where we end up with. Now, there we go and we have two additional wheels now honestly uh, guys i need to ask you for your feedback we are getting into the series where i'm gonna be doing multiple stuff with the confines of a single episode so please tell me in the comments would you like me to go chronologically meaning like okay i'm designing a plane and then i'm launching this uh, Duna probe or you would like me to have them separated content wise so it's easier to follow for example like you know okay i will build fly and launch the plane and then I'm gonna cut that part out chronologically and assemble it later on for the Duna mission when it comes. Do let me know in the comments below. This is today will be a preview of a regular episode where I just go through chronologically because we are playing with Kerbal construction time which involves the passage of time and in my opinion time adds complexity to the game. It means that the rescue missions need to be planned well in advance. You have to also plan the tech life support so you have enough so your Kerbals don't die out. So from my perspective I'm thinking I would prefer almost to have it 
as chronologically, but I know it might be actually a little bit harder to follow. Do let me know once again your opinions, I will go with a majority void regardless of my opinion, because I'm making this content to be fun for you guys, so do let me know in the comments below, it will be greatly appreciated. Right, okay, so in the end we're gonna be ditching the stability assist module who needs stability when we can have cool experiments, right? Yeah, anyway. What we're gonna do, we are gonna, probably maybe even the cockpit has some stability assist, so maybe it's not as rigid as the regular one, but I think it's gonna fly. So now I'm putting everything to a hotkey, you know, five for all repeatable experiments, while six will be to collect all data, or at least I think it will be. Yeah, now, okay, having said that, this is the first iteration of the plane, and I've decided to actually put a little bit of a surprise, additional safety measures, if you will. And those additional safety measures will be an additional ejection modules. After all, they're just here for fun. I mean, if something would go awry, I mean, you would want our Kerbals to survive. After all, they are mainly my patrons and channel members and most frequent commenters, so I really do want them to survive. They're really important for the health of this channel. Now. Let's see if we can actually, I'm just trying to make sure, yeah, okay, so abort is automatically added to the eject crew. Cool. Now, ejecting and let's try out. Oh, what happened? Did we have an engine flame out? Oh, why is it drifting to the right? Okay, well, it's a test flight. Yeah, okay, so only one engine is firing, which should explain why it's not going as intended. Oh boy, oh boy, eject, eject. Uh, not there, obviously. Yeah. I'm not going to comment how that went, but suffice to say I have added an additional uh, intake, which would, should solve the problem, and loud, let's give it a go. Okay, the two engines are performing amicably, and as you can tell, the plane lifts off just nicely, and yeah, it's flying. And I have the stability even without the SAS module, so good to know. Oh, look how beautiful it goes, and there comes the sonic boom! Yeah, isn't it glorious? And one I think I like is this sound effect, look at this. So if you go ahead, you don't hear it, but if you go back, you hear the sonic boom, because the, the sound travels after the plane. I really think whoever made this mod is a freaking genius. Good job, seriously. Now. We're gonna go and we're gonna make sure that we position ourselves for the landing. Yeah, all right, let's go. And oh, we're going a little bit too hot. Once again, oh, sonic boom again. Oh boy, okay, yeah, we are decelerating. Oh boy, okay, eject, eject. Now, at least uh, the one thing that we have tested successfully is the ejection chutes. Okay, doke. Now, it seems that our Bill is pretty happy. I mean, he is a little bit freaked out, but he's happy that he's alive. Right. Okay. Now, going to the Duna Lander, or the Duna Probe, actually. This craft I consider to be tested. Yes, now it's going into production and Kerbals will be able to fly it. Now, it's time that uh, the 20 days has passed and I have actually created a maneuver node, or I'm about to, to go to do now this probe will be doing the burn and it's supposed to be ejecting i'm using maneuver node planner so that one added the kerbal alarm clock alarm with all of the parameters needed i found this really helpful because then i can just enter data into the precise node and i'm gonna get a almost perfect encounter with duna now i know that there's an option for this in stock I actually like to tweak my approaches, so the stock doesn't give me that much option. So I do love the stock, but this one is more flexible. Yeah. So where's Duna now? Duna is okay, right about here. So it's not yet in the perfect transfer position, but still it's good enough. Now let's see. We are here. We, actually, we are going out of the transfer window because Kerbin has been Kerbin is on the inner orbit so it's going faster however with a little bit of fiddling we already managed to get 1487 meters per second and i'm trying to get this one as perfect as i can get it because right now every these 
adjustment is really cheap. So basically all of these adjustments are basically 0.1 meter per second. Later when we get closer, it might be tens, hundreds, or you know, maybe not thousands, but hundreds of meters per second. So you want to get as close as possible to do. Now, obviously, because it's so precise, we're never going to get that perfect. But as long as we come close, I'm really happy. Now, all right, having said that, we are, we have the burn in 26 minutes and the most sharp-eyed among you will probably notice one tiny error. If you do, you might want to actually put it in the comments below what it is. Now, relay, I have selected my target to be the medium range relay, the one that we have deployed in the previous episode, which has a big ass antenna, because that one has the capability to shoot all the way to Dres, I think. So I think Duna will be well covered. Now, all right, and I have queued my maneuver node, which will be in two minutes and 51 seconds, and I'm ready to have it a go. Yes, and I'm just making sure I can actually harvest some more science because, well, I'm a greedy bastard and uh, some science is always welcome. Right. See? Easy does it. Perfect. Now, if you think about it, that's pretty handy. We have 2 minutes and 12 seconds and might as well kick in a little bit of the afterburners and now in... 50 seconds, we are going to be starting our burn, hopefully. I'm also farming some more science because, well, we didn't have the gravi gravioli up in about yet, so we are obviously harvesting some more science. Now, I forgot to put the plasma here, so yeah, don't judge me. Now, getting ready for the burn and... And nothing. Holy shoot, I forgot to activate the engine. Yes. Ah, it's official. I'm a numbnuts. So, yeah, as you could probably tell, I messed up this one. But hopefully we'll come close enough and then we'll correct it. Now, since my error of my ways wasn't that obvious at the first glance, or probably was to some, I have ended up with a near maneuver, as you can tell. But remember what I told you, maneuvers are cheap. Meaning, if I do a correction pretty quickly, we should be pretty A-OK. -okay. So I'm going to leave the Kerbin Sphere of Influence, so I'm no longer influenced. Oh, gravity scan? Might as well. Transmit, please. Right, so, where was I? Ah, yes, getting out of the curb and sphere of influence. Come on, kicking the afterburners. I mean, this graphics, dude, I mean, it's, it's way better than KSP2. Right, now, we have a metric crap ton of science to harvest, so we were going to be doing performing all of the science and sending it back. Yes, telemetry report, there we go. Send it, temperature. I know I could press perform all science, but what would be the fun in that? You know you will like me clicking around. After all, there's a higher chance that I must mess up something. Now, how are we doing? Imaging science, atmospheric and magnetometer scan still to go. Log data, transmit. Atmospheric pressure. The reason why I didn't want, because I wasn't sure how much electric charge I would be spending. Clearly, I'm not spending enough, so that's fine. All right, and then atmospheric pressure, and done. Fine. With all of the important science experiments sent out, it's time for us to perform the maneuver node burn. In 13 minutes, let's go now back to Duna. And with the perspective on Duna, I want to make sure that I have the closest approach, and now I need to once again fiddle with the maneuver nodes. See, now the maneuver nodes is already taking us tens of meters per second. So it's no longer 0.1. Right. All right. I mean, it's significant, but it's not completely crazy. So the separation is coming in. We're going to get once again the periapsis. There we go. And now let's go in closer just to make sure that we 
get it decent now okay accelerate decelerate yep there we go okay it's a little bit down so i need prograde or yeah normal i think prograde yes let's oh wrong direction there we go 466 i think that's good enough so yeah 31 kilometer i think that's a little bit too close for comfort so we're gonna just nudge it a little bit out yeah there we go 87 i think that's good and look 86 meters per second while it's significantly more when the, when burning it's not that crazy so we're gonna have this delay and we're gonna be performing that burn this time with an engine turned on yeah all right oh and uh, is this a communitron turned on i mean i don't actually need it anymore Maybe I should just turn it off at some point. Anyway, let's just hold, hold the maneuver prograde, have the craft ready, fine. And let us perform the burn, after which we should be pretty happy campers. Honestly, I'm not gonna even bother. I'm gonna correct this once I'm much closer inside the circle. So I'm gonna set up another maneuver node and an alarm at the apoapsis which is much closer and that one will actually secure us a better Duna encounter. So let's see how much actually can we fill. That's wrong direction, a little bit more. See, it's not gonna be that expensive. It's just gonna be a little bit, yeah. 2.7 meters per second, perfect. So I'm gonna make sure that this is queued up into the Kerbal alarm clock and will be golden. There we go, add maneuver node, fine with a margin of two minutes at least, because it takes me a while to wake up and make sure everything is correct. Right, having said that, thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked today's episode and do let me know in the comments your feedback.